Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is a digital entrepreneur with 14 years of experience in the digital market. He is a founder of several web properties, including Unbox.ph, which is considered as one of the top tech and gadget sites in the country. Please welcome the Vice President for Digital Strategy and Consumer Disruptive Business, PLDT and Smart Communications, Mr. Carlo Ople. Oo, sasagutin ko yung tanong kung bakit mabagal lang internet mamaya. <laughs> Kasi may PLDT sa pangalan ko eh. So, usually yun ang tanong. <laughs> But anyway, so hi, my name is Carlo. I'm very happy to be with you guys this afternoon. Uh, they asked me to talk about digital. They asked me to talk about how you guys can thrive in the digital age. And hopefully, I'm able to share that with you in the next 20 to 30 minutes. So, to those who uh, have questions and I'm not able to answer them, uh, maybe after the talk, Uh, you can reach me on Instagram or on Twitter. Uh, this is my handle. I try as much as possible to be able to answer all of the questions that I get, be it from YouTubing, uh, creating content, or using digital to be able to enhance your business. So just keep that in mind. Now to kick things off, I'd like to share with you guys a quote uh, from my late grandfather. I come from a political family. Uh, my grandfather used to be the late uh, Senator Secretary Blas F. Ople. And if there's one thing that he kept on telling me when I was young, Tagalog to no, sinasabi niya sa akin, Carlo, umiikot ang mundo, hindi pwede nakatayo ka lang dyan. And I think it's very much the same when it comes to everything in life today. Be it how you communicate to your kids, how you communicate to your spouse, how you run your business, how you talk to your customers. Everything has dramatically changed because of digital. For example, Pag kumakain kayo kasama pamilya nyo during dinner, maraming guilty dito. Sino dito ang madalas, ganito ang itsura ng ulo? Hindi para magdasal. Dahil nakatingin sa telepono. ba? Diba? So you can really see that digital has permeated not just business, but also even our family lives. In fact, even mamaya pag-usapan natin, pag nagliligawan ng mga kabataan ngayon, ibang-iba na talaga. Swipe right, swipe left na. Hindi na marunong mag-ask, mag-date at kung ano. <laughs> talaga nagbago na talaga ang mundo. And we'll talk about that in the next few slides. And hopefully in the next 25-30 minutes, I'm able to convince some or most of you to be able to move with the rest of the world. Now I wear many hats. True to fashion, being a millennial. Millennial pa po ako. I was born 1982. I'm 37 years old, uh, making me one of the youngest vice presidents in the PLDT group. Uh, and so kapit pati kapit doon lang ako sa pinakadulo ng pagiging millennial. Now, as a millennial, I want to do so many things. I'm not content with having one job. I'm not content with having one business. I want to do a lot because I know I just have one life and I want to make the most of it. Yun yung totoong ibig sabihin ng YOLO. Diba? You only live one life. YOLO doesn't mean that you waste your life and you hook up with somebody randomly and you get drunk. YOLO means making an impact and making the most of that one life that you're given. So with that in mind, everything and anything that I want to do, that I'm passionate about, I try to set up and accomplish. So around eight years ago, I put up a tech website because I was so passionate about technology and digital. It was called Unbox.ph. Fast forward eight years, uh, it's now one of the top tech sites in the country. We get around 500,000 to 1 million unique visitors every month. And with this started, I was the only one running the site. I would write the articles every day, every time I would go home after working in the office. So at that time, I was working in TV5. I handled their digital division. To date, I have written over 10,000 articles on this site, making me, <laughs> parang, parang kaya siguro mabilis ako mag-type. <laughs> Yung mga words per minute, medyo mabilis, dahil nasanay na talaga. But more than that, writing so many articles has actually allowed me to speak better, to, say, to speak in English better, to communicate better, and to even have better vocabulary. So talagang kakaibang skill ang writing and communicating. So it wasn't just for writing about smartphones and gadgets. It was really about communications. No? Uh, fast forward to day, this blog, which I started eight months ago, eight years ago, makes more money than my salary as the vice president for PLDT and Smart. So imagine that. A blog that I started as a side project can make more money than a career I worked on for 15 years. That's how powerful the digital landscape 
uh, has evolved through the years. Apart from that, medyo natuwa ako sa gadgets and technology, so I started producing and hosting a TV show for Signal. It airs every week. It's called Gear Up. I won't play the entire thing, but just so you guys see how I try to maximize everything that I do in trying to be able to earn and build a business out of. Ngayon, hindi pa ako nagsawa doon. Uh, fast forward, you know, fast forward, rewind na lang. 16 months ago, I fell in love with sneakers. I fell in love with shoes. So sabi ko, why not make money out of the thing that I love? Why not try to make a business out of sneakers? But I didn't want to sell sneakers. <laughs> Ayoko magtayo ng tindahan na nagwenta na sapatos. What I wanted to do was to put up a YouTube channel that talks about shoes, that talks about sneakers, that talks about street culture, and be, in the process, allow me to be able to be closer to the next generation. I'll talk about that in a bit. Fast forward 16 months from now, uh, for, uh, today, I now have over 400... 447,000 subscribers on YouTube. So, that's a 16-month process. For those who don't know, I edit, shoot, upload every video by myself. I don't have a team. This I do on top of running a 150-person division in PLDT in Smart. So, pag uwi, dinner with Mrs., quality time. Pagdating ng mga alas 9, alas 10, shoot, edit, upload every day for the last 16 months, non-stop. <clears throat> now, the good news is, after 16 months, this YouTube channel now makes more money than my salary as the Vice President for the leading telco here in the Philippines. So you can already see the opportunities that you are provided for with digital. Yung mga anak ninyo na nagsasabi, gusto ko po maging YouTuber, mami. Gusto ko po maging YouTuber, daddy. Pwede niyong ikayaman yan, missis, mister. Talagang legit siyang trabaho at legit siyang potential na pwedeng gawin later on. Now, medyo masyado ako nag-enjoy. So since I was already producing TV, I took it a step further. I now produce a TV show on sneakers which airs every week as well on Signal. So again, you guys see a pattern. If I fall in love with something, if I enjoy something, I try to make it my living because it always puts me at my natural best. It always puts me at a place where it never feels like work, where it's always exciting, where I'm always happy, where I always look forward to editing, shooting, buying shoes. Of course, I'm going to buy my shoes, I'm going to buy my But at least when I'm shopping, I'm going to in the process. Diba? So I think that's one of the main lessons which we will talk about in a bit. And lastly, I am a telco guy. So I run the digital division of PLDT and Smart, and chances are you are not happy telco customers. So for today, as a special, labas yung mga ballpen ninyo, labas yung mga papel ninyo. This is my email address. Kung meron po kayong problema sa PLDT or Smart, I have a team on standby that will address it as soon as they can. Okay ba yun? Okay. Kasi lahat po ng empleyado sa PLDT Smart may slash yan eh. Di ba kinari ako? VP for Digital slash Customer Service. Dahil pag nalaman ng tao, taga PLDT ako, ang dami yung humihingi ng tulog. Oh, di ba? So again, if you guys have any issues with PLDT or Smart, as long as I'm part of the company, I'd love to help you guys out. This is my email address. Okay? Okay, game na tayo. Ah, lastly, I am an SLH. I am a super lucky husband. Yan po, misis ko. Si Mitch, uh, we were boyfriend, girlfriend for 10 years before we got married. We're now married for 9 years. So we've been together for, uh, what do you say, 19, 19 years. So I am able to do what I do because of her. So if you talk to my wife, you'll never hear her say any negative thing about me in public, even though we fight a lot. Uh, you will never hear her say anything bad about me. And I am honored and I am blessed to have a wife like her. So sa mga single dito sa, sa kwarto na to, don't ever lower your standards. Para sa mga lalaki sa kwarto na to, always pursue that woman because that woman will change your life for the better. Okay? So tandaan nyo yun, ha? When I get asked what is the best career decision I ever made, I always tell them, I married the right woman. Because my woman brings out the best out of me every day. So, tatandaan niyo po yun para sa mga lalaki at babae na nandito. Siyempre, lalaki at babae. Ano ba? Lalaki at babae nandito sa kwarto. Okay? Okay, so game na. So, yun yung intro natin. Now, we get to the digital blueprint. How do you become successful 
in the digital age. But before that, you need to understand who you are talking to. Sino ba ang digital age? Sino ba digital audience? And if you talk about digital, you have to talk about three different generations. You have Gen X. These are your people who are 40 to 54 years old. Uh, dinaanan nila ang martial law. Sila yung kinilig nung lumabas yung commercial ng McDo with Sharon and Gabby. Uh, dinaanan nila yung VHS, na yung VHS, personal computers, and of course, MTV. Then you have Gen Y, or you have the millennials. These are your 25 to 39 years old as of today. Uh, iba rin yung pinagdaanan nila. Dumaan sila sa power outages, Marvin and Jolina, Tabing Ilog, diba? Bea, John Lloyd. Mga, ay, iba na pala ngayon. Iba na issue ngayon. <laughs> but anyway, you guys know. So, Windows, MP3, Rise of the Internet. And lastly, you have Gen Z. This is the generation in the U.S. that lived through, of course, the first black president. This is the mobile generation. This is the generation that will shop using clicks and taps versus going to the actual store because they will be the real e-commerce generation of our age. Now, here's the thing. 50% of the Philippines today is already Gen Y and Gen Z. In short, the audience that you want to talk to, the audience on digital, makes for more than half the population already. If you take a look at the latest numbers, there are now 76 million Filipinos online. 76 million. There are more smartphones in the Philippines than there are people. There are more SIM cards. If you get the SIM cards of PL, of Smart, Globe, Sun, TNT, you add them all together, it's more than the total population of the Philippines. So you get already an idea of how massive digital has become here in our country. Now at this point, I'd like to share with you a video that I shot of different people who are millennials and they will tell you where they get their news, where they get their information, do they believe influencers, etc., etc. Uh, can we make sure lang na may volume yung video? Tapos pakilakasan kasi medyo mahina yung boses ng mga magsasalita. Okay, so let's play the video. Ayaw mag-play. I can talk over it since wala naman... Ayan, ayan. Where do you get your news? Facebook and Twitter. Social media, Facebook, Twitter. Twitter and Facebook. Since we spend most of our time in the office and wala ang TV's office, so of course, social media is the easiest. Um, Facebook and then... The pages that I follow on Facebook, so okay. I follow Raptor, right? News from Twitter. Twitter and Facebook. Instagram, uh, Facebook. Instagram. Facebook and Twitter. Uh, Instagram. 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 Uh, on ground and mostly on Facebook. About products and services, usually social media and Facebook. Um, reviews. So, if there's hype, for example, in Instagram. Um, Instagram, Twitter. Instagram. Sometimes, especially when it shows in their lifestyle or in their character. Some of them, um, parang if for me, credible. Because I feel like some influencers just, um, what do you call this? Parang they say they use they recommend products that they don't really use. Mm -hmm. So for me, I believe those influencers na as in kung ano lang talaga yung pinapaniwala nila na product, yun lang yung review nila. Not all. Not all. Oh, uh, not all. Sometimes. When I sometimes you can see that they actually use the product or the the services that they like what do you call this? Advertise. Um, only some. Uh, not really because because for me, they just do it because they're paid. Yes, based on the content. Yes. Uh, I think I can tell if it's scripted, their their script, their content, their copy, or if it's legit or yeah, natural. Yes. It's a lot of times when they post influencers about a certain brand, then they have a caption that's different, just like 
own personal uh, caption nila. Mm-hmm. Then ayun, sabay-sabay silang magpo-post. <laughs> um, for me, yung iba kasi parang sobrang hard sell. For example, sa Instagram, yung 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 specific person na yun, they post something na parang hindi related sa usual na pinupost nila. Parang may, they're promoting something or product. You can tell them the sincerity of their content based on what they say. You can also tell when it's paid and when they're doing it because they're sponsored. I'm not so into those. Um, I can tell when it's not authentic for some reason. Like you just example. know. You just know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's obvious naman sometimes in their captions when oh. they have a benta or suddenly after they put the caption below my it, product. May, uh, uh, uh-huh. my product. If you ask the same questions five years ago, do you think you'll get the same answers? No. You'll probably get newspaper, TV, billboard. But 50% of the population, more than 50% of the population, is telling you that they get information from products, services, and news on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. I can remember the first time more than 15 years ago, when I first pitched for a digital advertising campaign. So I was trying to sell digital. Ang binibenta pa namin noon, Friendster ads. Naalala niyo yun? Friendster. So, <laughs> nagbibenta kami ng Friendster ads. And ang yabang ko pa noon, pag nagpe-present ako sa mga CEO at marketing officers, sabihin ko, there are now 2.2 million Filipinos online. Tapos imagine yun now. I get to stand on stage and tell you that there are more than 76 million Filipinos online. Dramatic how the digital change and shift has happened here in the Philippines. This is the generation that doesn't just go online. This is the generation that lives online. Imagine yung IV, nakadikit sa braso nila. Yan yung generation ngayon. Gusto nyo parusahan anak nyo? Palitan yung password ng Wi-Fi. Boom. Lahat yan magre-reklamo. Diba? So, iba na talaga ngayon. Kumbaga sa hierarchy of needs, internet and Wi-Fi was already part of it. And you can already t- take a look. Here are some numbers that you might find interesting. The average Filipino millennial takes a look at his phone 150 times in a day. 150 times! Ang effort nun. Kaya siguro malaki na mga neck muscles natin ngayon sa kakaganon, eh, no? 150 times a day. They, internet is the first place to, I go to for information. 75%. 65% prefer to do a task digitally. This is the generation that you are talking to today. In the last 30 days, here are the search queries of Filipinos, uh, Filipino millennials. More than 32 million searched on Google about adulting stuff. Hindi po ibig sabihin ng adulting R18. Ibig sabihin ng adulting things that they would need to learn to become better adults. So for example, finance, business, uh, relationships, the bayan yon. And then you have 58 million searching related to experiences, yung mga mahilig biyumahe, travel, guides, restaurants, 58 million search queries. And lastly, 213 million search queries on creativity, music, film, movies, TV series, vlogs. So this is the generation that we are talking to today. This generation uses the internet to enable them to do what they want to do in life. From learning how to cook, to building their first app, and yes, finding love. It's very different. Tingnan nyo itong mga apps na to. Ay, by the way, bago yung apps, nung linigawan ko po yung misis ko, yan yung gamit namin. Pager. Paborito ko ito kwento eh. Alam nyo ba gano'ng kahirap manligaw gamit pager? Naabutan naman yata na inyo, iba sa inyo dito, di ba? Kagamit ka ng telepono, yung telepono mo hindi ganun pa. Yung diikot, tapos sabihin mo sa tao na hindi mo kilala, sasagot sa talain, di ba? Kanyari, easy call. Hello, sir, easy call. Tapos sabihin mo sa kanya, I love you. O, di ba? Patay. Kasi kailangan nila marinig, tapos papadala nila. Matakot ka na lang kung sagutin ka na lang na sabihin sa'yo bigla, I love you too. Di ba? So, yan yung ginagamit namin noon. But ngayon, I bet you, these apps are on the phones of your kids today. Tinder, Bumble, Happening, whatever it is. There's a dating app for every single type of person. There's a Christian dating app. There's a best friends app. There's an app that allows you to be able to look for people who just want to hang out, etc., etc. Whatever it is in terms of relationships, there is an app out there. So this is that generation that you need to talk to today. So the big question is, how do we thrive in this age? 
how do we thrive in this age where we have 76 million Filipinos online, where you have a very fast-changing market? How are you able to take advantage of all the opportunities that are before you today? Yun yung magiging core ng talk. We will talk about seven things, seven key tips that I'd like to share with you guys. These are seven tips born out of 15 years of experience being in corporate, being as a YouTuber, being a content creator, and being an entrepreneur. So lahat na natutunan ko, I will try to sum up in seven tips to help you in your own digital blueprint. The first and most important thing you have to find out is you need to find your ikigai. What is ikigai? The ikigai is your reason for waking up in the morning. Without purpose, you'll be lost. So you need to find out what it is that you will stand for. How do you find that? Very simple. I have a chart. And all I have to do every time is I look at this chart, and if I can be in the middle, I'm good. How do you find your ikigai? Number one, find what you love. Number two, are you good at it? Number three, can you make money out of it? Kung check, 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 you're in the middle, you're okay. Because you will be making money doing what you love, doing what you're good at. The fourth circle, hindi lang nalagay dyan, is it gives back to the world. So if you can do all four, you'll always be at the center, you'll always be at your natural best. So for example, for my experience, when I fell in love with gaming, I started a career in gaming. When I fell in love with digital, I moved to Friendster. I worked for Friendster for a for almost a year. And then after Friendster, I fell in love with content creation, I worked with TV5. And then after that, I put up two businesses on digital content creation. I fell in love with advertising, so I joined advertising. And finally, here I am today with YouTube and all of the different stuff that I do. By the way, people always ask me, why, do I, why did I join a telco? Um, I think it's my blood, not because I'm a politician, but because one of the biggest lessons that I learned from my grandfather is that if you want to change something, you have to go into the system and change it from the inside. You don't scream at it and shout at it from the outside. If you go to my Twitter account, you will see. Hindi ko talaga alam paano ako na-hire. <laughs> Kasi ang dami kong doon mura at galit sa PLDT at sa Smart dahil sobrang pangit ng servisyo na kukuha ko dati. And when I had the opportunity to be part of the company and hopefully try to be part of the solution, that's the reason why I joined uh, PLDT and Smart. So again, it's all about finding purpose. Because if you can find that, anything and everything that you do will actually work for you. Number two, you have to start creating and you need to stop consuming. What does this, what does this mean? Here in the Philippines, karamihan ng mga tao nagko-consume lang ng digital. Nag-Facebook, nanonood ng YouTube, nag-Netflix, nagbabasa ng articles. Sobrang konti lang yung actually gumagawa ng video Sobrang konti lang yung actually gumagawa ng articles. Sobrang konti lang yung gumagawa ng app. This is a country of consumers. It is not a country of creators. But here's the thing. This age will reward creators, not consumers. If you are a type of person who can create your own blog, vlog, content, or app, then this age will reward you. But if you will just be the person who will consume, who will read, who will watch, who will play Mobile Legends hanggang umaga, at manood ng Netflix pa ulit-ulit, the opportunities aren't available to you. You have to be a creator to thrive in this age. Another thing, one of the most important things in digital is that you stop from getting yourself from getting interrupted. Napakadaming notifications lumalabas sa telepono today. Do you, you agree? Pag nanonood ka lang, ang dami na eh. May nag-text sa'yo, may nag-message sa'yo sa Viber, may nag-message sa'yo sa Telegram, may notification ka sa YouTube, may lumabas na ganito, may tumawag sa'yo. Everybody is trying to interrupt you and trying to get your time. So you need to take control back of your attention so you can stop consuming and you can start creating. Here's one tip. Go to your phone, go to settings, and turn off notifications for all the apps that you don't need. So you don't get bothered as much. I turned off my notifications for Facebook, for Twitter, for YouTube, uh, for messages. I actually filtered. I only get notifications for less than 10 people. That includes my family, my best friends, my boss. That's it. Everybody else, they can wait. Emails. I turned off notifications for emails. What do I do? I just make sure that I read them in the morning and at the end of the day. Mabilis naman ako mag-reply. <laughs> So, hindi naman yata, sigurado naman ako pag may problema, 
at hindi makantay, tatawag sila. <laughs> diba? So, yun yung method ko of trying to preserve my time and my attention because I know that everybody is trying to get it. So again, that's the key. And lastly, and I cannot stress this enough, you need to train yourself to ignore the news. Why is this important? Because if you go to the news, the current state of the publishing world is built towards clickbaiting, is built towards getting your attention, and trying to feed you article after article after article so that you spend so much time on the website, so much time watching their videos. I haven't followed most of the news websites today because again, I focus on creation and not consumption. Nanggits ninyo? Kasi ilang oras ba nagagastos, thank you, ilang oras ba nagagastos ninyo kakapanood ng video, kaka-Facebook, at kakabasa ng mga articles? Eh, karamihan naman dyan, fake news. Karamihan dyan, may taong nagpupush. Karamihan dyan, may agenda. Diba? So why will you not protect your attention, your time, and your values, especially that of your kids. Okay? So ignore the news. That is very, very important. I have an app. It's called the Pocket App. So I just actually read it articles while in traffic. The most important things that I want to read every day. Ganun lang. I don't read articles that don't benefit me. I don't read articles that don't give value. Kasi what you see, what you read, actually feeds into your heart and how you act. Here's one interesting thing. I used to weigh 435 pounds. I am down to 335 pounds. What changed? Na-try ko na lahat ng diet, by the way. Keto, Cohen, ano ba ba? Ano yan? Yung paleo, paleo, whatever you. <laughs> Na-try ko na rin lahat ng food supplements from the shakes. Di ko na mabanggitin yung mga brands. Uh, to all of the different network marketing companies on weight loss products. What's my problem? It was never the product. It was the mindset and the attitude. I finally figured out how to fix it. Sa Facebook ko, in-off ko lahat ng mga ayoko makita. Lahat ng mga nega sa buhay, in-unfollow ko, in-ignore ko, blinak ko, lahat ng mga nega. Ang ginawa ko, may option sa Facebook, see first. So pag nag-post yung see first na yon, yun lang makikita mo sa Facebook feed mo. So ang ginawa ko, see first, men's health. See first, the rock. Kailan mo si the rock? Si Dwayne Johnson. See first, lahat ng mga fitspiration ko. Ginawa ko din sa Instagram. So lahat nakikita ko, motivation. Lahat na nakikita ko, pampagana, para magpapayat. Dati kasi, pag titignan niyo yung newsfeed ko, master chef. <laughs> <Ano ba? laughs> kasi, kasi sarap panoodin, at the same time, nagugutom ka, di ba? So nakita niyo yung difference? So what you feed your mind affects your heart and affects what it is that you guys do. So again, this is the era of creators. Consume less, create more. Number three, there is a content creation strategy which I call the pillar strategy. This is the pillar content strategy. So what I did was I made the cheat sheet for all of you today on how I do my content. So it's a very simple cheat sheet. If you follow it in terms of format and number of minutes and number of seconds, I think you guys will be okay. So ito yung parang technical digital marketing part ng talk natin. What is the pillar strategy? You start with the medium na long form, YouTube. Pagdating sa YouTube, karamihan ng mga tao, mahilig manood na mahaba. So you put up a YouTube account. Pwede kang maging YouTuber. Diba? So you put up a YouTube account to be able to monetize and build a brand on the YouTube platform. If you go to YouTube, these are the most important things. Number one, thumbnails and titles are 80%. If your thumbnails suck, nobody will click, nobody will watch. Most of the time, people spend their, their effort on production on story, but they never think about the thumbnail. So you have to think about the thumbnail, you have to think about the title. The top YouTubers in the world put more effort shooting the thumbnail and thinking of the title than actually shooting the video. Because if people don't click, they will not watch. Number two, follow the 5 to 10 second rule. What is the 5 to 10 second rule? Every 5 to 10 seconds, there has to be a change in the visual. Pag nagsasalita ka, hindi pwedeng every 15 seconds lang mawawala. Kailangan every 5 to 10 seconds may visual, may audio cue, may change angle. Why is that important? Because YouTube will reward you if people watch your videos for a long time. So pag maraming nanonood ng video mo na mahaba, YouTube will recommend you to everybody else para panoodin kayo. That's how you become viral. The longer the watch time. Understand? 
So you need visual cues and disruptions to be able to keep them interested so that they do not zone out. Sino nanonood ng probinsyano? Wala. O, meron konti. Di ba sa probinsyano, meron yung mga change angle, yung biglang mag-zoom in sa mukha, tapos mag-zoom out, natutunan nila yon from YouTube. Kasi it's one of those visual disruptions and visual cues that they use. Number three, you create videos that people look for. Pwede kayo sumakay sa mga uso. Pag yung mga challenge, challenge, pwede kayo gumawa ng video, naturally, magiging viral yan. Number four, target 8 to 10 minutes time of the video that you make. Okay? So, hindi pwedeng maikli pagdating sa YouTube. Ang pumapatok sa YouTube, medyo mahaba. Next, you always ask people to subscribe. Because every person who watches your video that doesn't subscribe, malaki yung chance na hindi yan babalik. But if you get them to subscribe, every time you have a new video, they get notified. Okay, so you always say it. Please subscribe, magpwede kayo magparafol, but you always need to keep on telling them to subscribe. Next, use them, use incentives to get them to watch longer. Sabi natin kung wakay YouTube channel. Pwede niyo sabihin at the start, please make sure you watch until the very end kasi magpaparafol po ako ng smartphone. Parang ganon. So manonood sila hanggang, wala akong parafol ate. Kasi may mga next smile. Okay, so pwede kayo magmanood hanggang sa dulo, tapos manonood sila, and pwede sila manalo ng smartphone. So yan ang formula pagdating sa YouTube. Kung gusto niyo maging YouTuber, tandaan niyo lang yan, more often than not, okay na kayo. You just have to follow those things. Sabihin natin, may YouTube channel ka na, kumikita ka na, kasi pagdating ng 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours watch time, pwede ka na kumita sa YouTube. May email ka makukuha, sabihin ni YouTube, you're now part of our partner program. Every time may ad na lumalabas sa YouTube channel mo, may cut ka. That's how it works. That's how YouTubers make money. The next thing you should do is Facebook. Why is Facebook important? Those who are on Facebook are usually not on YouTube. Karamihan ng mga mag-addict sa YouTube, medyo bata. Millennials down. Lalo na Gen Z. Ano nangyari sa Gen X? Bakit lahat sila nasa Facebook? Ang nangyari dyan, karamihan ng mga anak ninyo, karamihan ng mga nakababata, umalis sa Facebook kasi nandun tayo. <laughs> nandun yung mga magulang nila. <laughs> so ayaw na nila doon. <laughs> Hindi na daw, cool. <laughs> so karamihan sa kanila, pumunta ang YouTube, tsaka Instagram, tsaka Twitter. But Facebook is still important. Why? Because they recently just turned on monetization. So you can actually make money on YouTube and if you edit the video correctly, you can make almost the same amount of money on Facebook. Gets nyo? One effort, two times the money. So what's important on Facebook? You need to shorten it to three minutes, follow the five-second rule, always use subtitles, and every now and then, put in boosts. Yung para mas maraming makanood. Why three minutes? Kasi you, Facebook says that they prioritize and they push three-minute videos on Facebook. And to be monetized, the minimum amount of minutes is three minutes. Gets? So, ano ibig sabihin yan? Gumawa ka ng 10-minute video, ikat mo to three minutes sa editing, pag pareho ka monetized, doble kikitain mo dyan sa isang video na ginawa mo. So, that's how powerful the digital medium can be. But wait, there's more. Meron pang Instagram. Instagram just recently announced. Ito, ito ah, dito niyo mag-gauge yung reaction ng mga tao eh, kung creator ka or consumer. Instagram just announced that they will start putting ads on IG stories and IG TVs. Ngayon, kung adi ka sa Instagram, maasar ka. Kasi masisira yung viewing habit. Pero kung content creator ka, excited ka. Kasi pwede kang kumita ng pangatlong beses. Kasi the content that you create on YouTube you edit to Facebook, you edit to YouTube, uh, to Instagram, and suddenly it's three times the revenue potential. So what's the thing to remember when it comes to Instagram? Shorting it to two minutes, make it more concise, re-edit to portrait mode. Alam niyo portrait? Patayo. Kasi kung ang tao nanonood sa Instagram, paganyan, hindi paganon. Okay? So edit nyo lang. Pagkatapos nun, follow the five-second rule, which is the five to ten-second rule, and take screenshots para lang meron kayong pang-post sa feed. So do you understand the pillar strategy? You create a pillar on YouTube and then you create everything else from what you created on YouTube. This is the strategy that I employ personally. This is the strategy that we do in Unbox. And this is the strategy that we've been following in PLDT and Smart and a lot of the top 
multinationals around the world. It's called the pillar strategy. So kung may negosyo kayo, sabihin natin nagbebenta kayo ng mga produkto, pwede nyo gawing ganyan. Huwag nyo lang isipin na yung kikitain ninyo yung ads sa YouTube. Kasi pag maraming nanonood sa inyo, ang dami nyo pwedeng ibenta, mas malaki pakikitain ninyo. And we'll talk about that in a bit. Oh, by the way, there's still Twitter, pero wala pang monetization masyado sa Twitter. And usually people just go to Twitter to complain. So, <laughs> diba? so yan. Pero I still put it there. So again, yun yung ating cheat sheet. So I hope you guys were able to take a picture of that because that should help you in your content creation journey. Now, how are you able to grow your assets, your platform? Sabihin natin, gumawa kayo YouTube channel, gumawa kayo Instagram account. This is the fastest way to do it. There are three ways. Number one, friends and family. You tell everybody you know. Email nyo silang lahat na YouTuber ka na and ask for their support. That's number one, your personal circle. Number two, online communities. Nung panahon namin, ang tawag dyan, forum. Yan yung mga Pinoy exchange. Alam nyo ba yun? Ngayon, yan yung mga Facebook groups. To give you guys an example, every time I put up a YouTube video about sneakers when I was starting out, I would post that link on Yeezy Talk Philippines, Adidas Talk Philippines, Nike Talk Philippines, ano ba, sneaker size 12, sneaker size 11, sneaker size 10, Pinoy Manila Sneaker Expo, yung mga, lahat ng mga sneaker group, I would post my content and get as many views as possible. Do you, do you guys see how it's done? So you start with your immediate circle and then you build out to other communities that share the same interest. And lastly, you collaborate with other YouTubers. Okay. Kasi nasa number four pa lang tayo. Parang may extend ako. <laughs> okay lang siguro yan. So tip number four, you need to embrace failure. This is very important. Why? Because you will make a lot of mistakes on digital. But the key to being successful on digital is that you learn immediately and you change and you optimize. This is what we call growth hacking. Growth hacking is a term that was popularized by Facebook. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, pag may problema, meron ka multiple solutions, you try everything. And the one that delivers the most success, you reallocate your resources to that. So what does that mean? When I create a video, I have, I change my thumbnails minimum three to four times. Because I see which is the thumbnail that gets the most clicks. I change my titles usually around two to three times. Because I can tell. Because the YouTube dashboard will tell you if it's working or not. Gets nyo? So if you embrace failure, then you can learn so much faster. And you can be better so much faster. So pag hindi gumagana ang views ng isang video, hindi ka malulungkot at hindi mo sabihin, ayoko na maging YouTuber. Pag growth hacker mindset ka, aalamin mo kung saan ka nagkamali, ano yung kailangan mong baguhin para maging mas successful. Understand? So okay, so that's the next bit. You need to embrace failure. Number five, you need to learn how to do digital advertising. This is very, very important. Why? Digital advertising in the Philippines is severely underpriced. The prices on digital kasi, pag mag-place kayo ng ads, sabihin natin sa Facebook tsaka sa YouTube, it's called marketplace. Ibig sabihin ng marketplace, supply and demand. Pag maraming tao na sa Facebook, Pero konti lang ang nag-replace ng ads. Ano ibig sabihin? Mura presyo. Pag konti lang ang nasa Facebook, pero sobrang dami nag-advertise, ano ibig sabihin? Mahal ang presyo. Ano situation natin sa Pilipinas ngayon? Sobrang dami nag-Facebook, sobrang dami nag-YouTube, pero konti lang nag-advertise. Ano ibig sabihin? Mura pa ngayon. A lot of studies have been showing that the CPMs, that's the amount of money that you pay per person to reach somebody on Facebook, will grow as much as six times in the next three years. So your mistakes today will be six times more expensive three years from now on Facebook. I was talking with, the, I was coaching one real estate agent a few days ago. Bigyan ko yung kwento. So, di ko na lang papakalanan yung kumpanya and everything else. Meron akong dream. Ang dream ko, bumili ng kondo ng hindi ko magastos ng ni piso. Yun yung pangarap ko. Bumili ng three-bedroom condo unit sa the fort nang hindi gumagastos ni piso. So what did I do? I worked with a real estate agent. Gumawa kami ng series of vlogs about the condo unit. And I made out a deal with the real estate agent. All of the referrals I give you through the YouTube channel, you give me 1.5%. 1.5%. 
1.5% lang. I know your commission is around 3%. Give me 1.5%. And I'm okay. What happened? To date, she has closed over 22 referrals. So I am on track on paying 100% a 44 million condo unit in the fort without spending a single peso. So that's how powerful digital can be. You guys understand? That is my best performing video kasi nakabili ako ng condo gamit yun. Pero di pa naman tapos, malayo pa, mahal pa siya. So sana marami pang ma-refer in the next few months. But anyway, what, is the, what did I do differently? And what does the uh, real estate agent do differently? We spend on Facebook. We spend on ads. Kasi I know that a lot of agents don't. So it's like untapped potential na alam kung pwede din pagkakitaan ng agent. So she's now making so much because this is just how much you need to reach one person on Facebook. Less than one centavo to reach one person on Facebook. This is how much you need to get one person to click an ad on Facebook. Around one peso, 50 cents. So imagine the lead generation that you guys can do for the businesses that you own and that you run. You understand? So that's how powerful digital can be. And again, in the next three years, it's going to grow times six. So while it is still cheap, while it is still low, now is the time to learn. Wala po akong agenda. Hindi po ako nagtatrabaho para sa Facebook. Hindi po ako nagtatrabaho para sa YouTube. Hindi ko kayo binibentahan. Hindi ko kailangan ibenta to sa inyo. Ang sinasabi ko lang sa inyo, yayaman kayo. Basta gamitin nyo yan. Kasi wala pa ibang masyadong gumagamit niyan. Dahil pag dumami ang gumamit niyan, maniwala kayo, magmamahal yan. At pag nagmahal yan, sayang. Sobrang sayang. Okay? Oh, malapit na tayo tapos. Number six, <laughs> build multiple revenue sources. As you guys can imagine, digital is not just about advertising. Digital means you can sell products and services. This is a screenshot of how I make money on YouTube. Green, 40% brand deals. Yan yung mga kumpanyang lumalapit sa akin para i-promote yung mga produkto at services nila. 40%, yan yung YouTube revenue. Yan yung kinikita ko, yung sahod ko sa YouTube one one na nakukuha ko. 15% affiliates. What is affiliates? Yan yung mga link na linalagay ko sa ilalim, tapos pag mag-click sila, bumili sila, may katako. What are the sites that have affiliate programs? Lazada, Zalora, Poundit. So you can sign up, post the link. If somebody clicks that link and buys something, you get anywhere from 5 to 10%. As simple as that. And with the advent of uh, a lot of digital wallets, such as kahit competitor namin, Gcash, Paymaya, and because of e-peso, yung law, you can transfer easily to your bank account. Ganun na lang siya kadali. And lastly, I have 5% merchandise. So, nagawa ko na experiment. Gumawa ko ng t-shirt, tapos nakalagay lang doon sa gitna, hustle. <laughs> Simple. Hindi ako designer. Wala akong creative jeans in my body to design. T-shirt lang, na nakalagay sa gitna, hustle or 7 to 1. Hindi ko na maalala. So, I, I sold the shirt for 990 pesos. Sinabi ko, limited edition siya. I sold 1,000 shirts in under 24 hours. So, you can, you can already see how you can monetize and build audiences as long as you provide value, the right amount of value. Yung t-shirt naman na binili ko, hindi lang yung chip, ha? Tapos, alam mo yun, printan lang namin. Naghanap talaga kami ng tamang tela na medyo makapal para naman quality. <laughs> o, diba? So, this chart, you can actually plan for it. If you can get merchandise or your own products, your own services to be a bigger chunk of the pie, then the advertising is just gravy. The advertising is just extra. Yun yung gusto kong gawin. So that's why I recently put up a new company on merchandise and streetwear, which we're launching in the next few months. So hopefully in the next few months, we'll be launching a line of shirts, jackets, hoodies, socks, and whatnot to be able to increase this particular part of the pie. Kasi ayoko mag-rely kay YouTube. Intindihan nyo? Gusto kong marami. Maraming pinanggagalingan ang pera. Ah, haba pala na itong ginawa ko presentation. <laughs> number seven. Para nawala na ako ng two pounds. No? <laughs> Para sa, sa pawis. Okay, game number seven. And this is probably the most important I'll share with you guys for the, for, for the talk. It's called the seven to one principle. So this is the principle that I followed throughout my entire career. 
And the premise is very simple. I always get asked, Carlo, where do you find time? Carlo, where do you find time to have a day job? Carlo, where do you have find time to be able to do your YouTube channel, to be able to run three businesses on the side? Where do you find your time? There's a study that came out. The average Filipino spends 10 hours on social media every day. That's the average. When I saw that study, I realized that all I had to do was to lessen the amount of time me consuming content and spend those 10 hours creating content and I can actually make a lot of businesses and a lot of things. So I cut down on consumption, ratcheted up creation. So what is the 7 to 1 principle? It's very simple. 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., for somebody like me who's still employed, I build my career because I enjoy my career. I enjoy being in corporate life. I enjoy the fact that I'm surrounded with so many brilliant people in the office and I learn from them so much. One of the most precious things that I have today is being able to sit in the same room as people such as Manny Pangilinan and listen to him talk in the boardroom. To be able to suck up as much knowledge from his experience, for me, priceless. And that, I think, is why I still enjoy being in corporate because I just love that part of the job. Learning and seeing the titans of business do how they do their business. So I really don't see myself ever leaving my corporate job because I enjoy it. I really, really enjoy it. So 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., I build my career. 7 p.m. to 1 a.m., I build my dreams. I work on my YouTube channel. I work on my articles. I work out and go to the gym and try to lose some pounds. But that 7 p.m. to 1 a.m., I put to work as much as possible. Now, granted, if you are already married, if you have kids, that 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. may not be 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. anymore. It can be, I don't know, 10 to 10.30 <laughs> or 11 to 11.30 or 11.30 to 1. In my experience, before I was married, it was the whole 7 p.m. hanggang 4 a.m. pa yan. When I got married, after several years, more or less, it's now around 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Then, hindi na talaga. But what's important is, if you consistently do something and build something every day, kahit YouTube channel pa yan, app yan, blog yan, website yan, just put in two hours, one hour every day, give it time, it will blow up and it will change your life for the better. Always remember, guys, when it comes to digital, consume less, create more, follow the 7 to 1 principle, and make digital work for you. Don't be the person being worked by digital. Thank you very much, and good afternoon.